So, welcome to Enterprise Expo, Work Avenue's annual flagship business event. It is absolutely fantastic to see you all today, to see you all today, and I really hope that you enjoy the event that we have organized for you. My name is Joanna Sady, and as head of the business team, I am delighted, as are my wonderful business team colleagues, Pim Davidson and Sarah Gatoff, who are waving now, um, to see so many familiar names and faces on the screen. But for those of you who are new to Work Avenue, here is a potted history. Work Avenue was established back in 2006 and set up to help people become financially independent and earn a living to support themselves and their families. And we do this by helping over 2,000 people each year to upskill by providing training, information, advice, guidance, workshops, and one-to-one -one support so that they can either find jobs, change career, or start or grow a thriving business. 10 years later, in 2016, we opened the WeHub Shared Community Office Space Building, which is a fantastic space for business owners to rent an office, a desk, or for people to hot desk through a WeHub membership scheme. And then moving swiftly through COVID to 2021, we launched WAGE, which is our social enterprise and aims to both create employment and grow business by training a workforce to support small businesses in key areas so that they too can grow and develop. We are training people in disciplines such as digital marketing, web design, graphic design, and office skill. So if you're a business that needs a project delivered in one of these areas, then please let us know. And we hope that we may be able to find you a wage member who can help you with your project for an affordable rate. I wish that at the opening of this year's annual business event, I would be talking about how great everything was following the past couple of rocky years. However, as you are all very aware, we have lurched, lurched from getting through coping with COVID to an economic downturn due to staggeringly high inflation because of high energy prices and negative growth. So today's event is focused on practical steps that you as small business owners can take to get you through these challenging times, which I hope will encourage growth. My first suggestion to you is to make sure you don't hide from these challenges, but that you set out some goals and work out where do you want to be by December 23? To help with this, I would suggest joining one of the two sessions we have at 11.30, dedicated to this topic of mindset and development. Nicole Soames will be looking at developing a winning mindset so you learn to banish self-doubt and dial up your ambition levels. Meanwhile, at the same time, Jason Green will be giving those businesses that are already trading some excellent tips and techniques built around the EOS program, which transformed his business onto a growth trajectory. For those of you who are really interested in setting some goals on where you want to be by December 23, I am actually going to be running a setting business goals workshop in person in Finchley on the 15th of December. So please do go onto our website to book yourselves a slot that you can set yourself some realistic goals for 2023. Clearly, understanding where you need to be financially is absolutely vital. And this comes to be my second objective. Okay. It's absolutely vital when it comes to both setting up and running a business and even more so during challenging financial times. So we have two fantastic sessions at 10.30, which will cover this issue. If you are considering setting up a business, then Mendy Jacobs will be looking at whether it's a good time to start and advise on what to consider. However, again, if you're already trading, Benjamin Rubin, who's a serial entrepreneur, and Ricky Neumark of Melanick Fine will outline how to weather this financial storm. 
Having met with hundreds of businesses since I joined Work Avenue back in July 2018, I actually still find it staggering that many people I see don't have a handle on the financial side of their business. So again, please do book a meeting with me or one of the team to help you with this if you want to become more financially savvy around your business goals. And there is also a workshop to help with this, negotiation and pricing on the 6th of December. Many people often say it's really useful to hear from other entrepreneurs and how they have coped with either launching or growing a business. So at 12.30 today, the final session of the morning, you will be able to do just that, as four entrepreneurs will be chatting about their stories in a fireside chat session facilitated by the business team here at Work Avenue. So please do get your questions ready for Josh Barron and Jonathan Schneider who are part of our 2022 Business Wait, Accelerator okay. program, and Stuart Rubenstein and Deborah Sobel, who will be talking through their plans for growth and how they have done this. Yeah. My final suggestion for growth during a downturn is to continue working hard to capture the attention of um, prospective customers. Many people think that they should put the shutters down and stop marketing. But this is counterproductive as you still need to spread the word and reach out to new customers. So our first two speakers will be talking about just this in a couple of minutes time. I am thrilled that Ben Bolger will be joining us from Meta, that's Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp. And he will be talking through how to build your online presence and engage your community. While Laura Fox will be sharing her expertise on how to be a social success on LinkedIn. And that session is on an alternate Zoom link. So please go back to your schedules to find that link. Clearly, it goes without saying that if anyone here would like to book a bespoke one-to-one -one business advice meeting following today's event with any of the team, please do be in touch via email or phone and we will set up a time to meet with one of you. I am now really excited to officially open the conference. You should have all received the schedule for today's event with two different Zoom links, the one that you're on now and one other Zoom link. So stay on this Zoom if you want to hear uh, Ben Bolger from Meta, but if you have signed up and you want to hear from Laura Fox on LinkedIn, please link, log on to the other Zoom link where Kim and Sarah will admit you to that session. We would urge you to keep yourself on mute and please write questions in the chat box, but we would love to see your faces. So if you can, please do have your video on and thank you very, very much and enjoy the morning. Looking forward to seeing you all. I think LinkedIn is the best place for me, do you? Yeah. And I'm now going to ask, oh, there's Ben, here we are, to unmute. And I'm going to pin Ben. Ben, are you going to uh, start? Do you want me to share the slides or I'll make you co-host so that you can uh, share the... I'm, I'm happy for you to share the slides, that's fine. I've got, I've made you co-host. So if you want to cool. open up the slides and do do all of that, then... Uh, no, no problem. And um, I'm going to pin you as well. I'll do that now then. Um, good morning, everybody. Thank you uh, very much for joining the session. I'll share my slides. So just let me know that you can see it and hopefully you can we can yeah fantastic there we go so what you should be able to see is, is build an online presence um we can hold on i might need to just okay great there we go all right, so yeah, um, by way of introduction, my name is uh, Ben Bolger. I'm a partner manager at uh, Meta in Ireland, and um, I've been at the organization now for nearly two years. Then before that, I worked at um, a partner 
called ROI Hunter, and we were an ad tech platform that um, worked with advertisers to basically plug and play on the platform. Then before that, I worked for a governance software company um, looking at um, software that created data analytics and governance for um, organizations. And um, then before that, I was an accountant. So I've done a few different things now, um, but I've been at Meta for, for a, a bit of a while. And um, yeah. And thank you very much for, for, for being with us, Ben. We really appreciate it. No worries. Happy to be here. So um, what I'll cover today is I'm going to be looking at how to establish a presence on um, Facebook and Instagram. Um, I'll then be looking at how to um, experiment with messaging. I'm just going to hide this, uh, this panel here. How to experiment with messaging and content to engage your audience um, with images, videos and stories. How to engage uh, with people with uh, engage people with Facebook and Instagram live events um, and groups and services. And then finally, what we'll look at is how to use the business suite to track your activity, um, any messages you get, and also the insights that you're going to pull from that. So, I guess the best place to start when we look at how we compare to other platforms uh, on the internet is that we have. Um, probably the largest user base of, no, of any of so the much. um social Bye -bye. platforms Bye. Sorry, um, we, we we probably have the largest um user base of, of any social platform um currently out there um with about 3.58 it's actually a bit more now um because it grow it has been growing steadily um active uh, monthly users so what we do see is when you're looking for reach as um as a way to 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 try and gain a large audience and uh, and grow your business then we're probably the first place to go to generate that intent so how to actually establish that presence to begin with um we'll we'll start with so the first thing is actually to set up a profile and there are two kinds of profiles you have a personal profile which is probably what everybody is familiar with um, but then you also are able to have a professional profile a page and um, what we recommend you do when you have a business is to create your page first of all so to do this um, you go up here onto your your settings on your page click on the page button on the create and then from there, it'll allow you to create a business page. What this does is gives you a presence um, whereby people can interact with your business as a professional entity, as well as give you features that you'll be able to use, uh, which are only for businesses. So I'd start with the creating a name, add your description and select your category. Once you've done that, you'll be able to add different things like your website, your location info, phone number, um, any messaging preferences, um, different parts to, to make sure that people are able to contact you. What we also have is a new page experience. So um, if you do have a page, you may find that um, we are migrating to a newer experience. The idea of that being that we want to simplify it as much as possible, and there's going to be more controls coming in. Um, with things such as spam filters um, and community controls. So you're able to actually make sure that the, the content that's on your page is suitable for your business. Um, and you're able to reach out to people um, at scale with some of our automation features around messaging. The next step I would do once you have a page ready is to create an Instagram account. So to do that, you go onto Instagram, you um, select your category, and this is actually quite important because when you get down the line and you decide you want to do some testing, we pull benchmarks from your category as well. So it's when you're looking to benchmark your business against others in terms of how your brand is performing or how your um, ads are driving conversion, um, then we actually do look at the category you have as well. So it can be quite handy um, to do it from the beginning, um, although it, it can be changed later on also. You can also then have two different types. So you have business and creator. I would choose business. 
add your information, and then set up your professional profile. What this will then do is give you um, a place uh, on Instagram, which will link to your, your Facebook page and gives you a unified presence across those both of those platforms um, and allow you to have a, a single place that people can come and reach to your business. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it takes you through the process step by step. So I don't think you'll have too many difficulties setting up. We have made it very easy. And um, the final thing to look out for is eventually, probably some point next year, we'll look to actually build business profiles into WhatsApp. So you'll then have a third place you can go and people will be able to WhatsApp you um, by clicking on a link or, or finding you on WhatsApp by searching your business. So once you've got these pages, the important bit is how do you build your presence and reach people? And first of all, you have these pages. I would edit them, make sure that they fit your brand um, and they are personalized to your brand. Make sure you have information. This will actually allow people to find you as well. So what you'll see is, um, particularly when it comes to location, people are able to find you on our maps functionality. Um, but also when you have your website, that makes you searchable as well. So not only will you turn up on search, but you will actually turn up on Instagram search and um, Facebook search with, with the website too. I then start with inviting people. So if you have a strong network, this is the place to start. And I would uh, invite them to, to like and follow your page and share that page around. And it's free to do hopefully and um with a strong network that means you can leverage that very quickly uh, without needing to invest um much money up front to do that i would then look to partner with other businesses we see this for businesses of any size and we still encourage um, very large um brands on our platform to do this when running their campaigns particularly around this time of year because not only does it increase exposure, but it actually allows you to tap into new audiences that maybe weren't aware of your business or page to begin with. And what we do find is a trend very common is people have a strong idea of what their audience is, um, but might not actually realize that um, there are people that would use their business that they didn't think of. And so we recommend going broad to begin with, particularly when it comes to targeting ads, um, because you'll be quite surprised about the kind of people that will interact with your business that you maybe didn't think would. The next thing I'd recommend is, is try to post regularly. You can schedule these as well, um, but posting regularly, first of all, keeps you top of mind for a lot of people that are gonna be following your page, um, but it also allows you to um, encourage people to, to reach out to your page and comment and like, um, and it also allows you to update on any product changes um, and, and anything that's that's happening behind the scenes at your business. It has a personal aspect that we see work very well um, when it comes to remaining top of mind uh, and increasing brand recall um, for your audience. The other thing I'd recommend is, is experiment with different types of posts. One thing that we're seeing work really well at the moment are polls. Um, so if you have Instagram, we recommend you try using a poll on your story and asking your audience what they think of a certain thing. So you could be like, well, do you prefer this product or that product? Do you prefer this or that? But polls are a great way, first of all, to get people to interact, but actually... Um, on the other side of it, you get an answer that is usable for you and um, you're able to understand possibly what the preference is there from, from your, your customer base. Um, alongside that, I'd supplement that with videos and um, they can be high fidelity or low fidelity. We find both tend to work quite well and um, low fidelity ones are getting easier to, to create. We have... Um, quite a mature video creation uh, platform built into our ads platform now um, in our creator hub. And it has resources such as royalty free music you can use as well. Um, and you can go all the way from that to actually creating reels with a native tool there. If you are looking to create reels, I recommend they are actually lower fidelity and have a more natural feel to it. We find that tends to work better than a, a very highly curated ad. 
the other piece of the puzzle there is to um, actually engage with the community. And um, what we see a lot of businesses do is um, use Instagram and Facebook Live. And this can be either to do something like a tutorial or talking around your business um, to actually doing live shopping as well, which has been hugely successful in the past. And people are able to watch and, and buy from you uh, in real time. But ultimately, what it does do, it gives, it gives you that real time interaction with your audience. And this is particularly important if you're looking to reach people who aren't in your local vicinity. Ben, somebody's just asked, what does high and low fidelity mean? Ah, that's um, a good question. And uh, high fidelity is a high quality ad. So that's what you'd probably see on the likes of TV, for example, um, where it's been very curated and created by a professional. A low fidelity one is um, low quality, and that would be essentially almost um, taking a video on your phone. So what we do see with Reels that works really well is, is almost someone taking a video with their phone to look like a, a TikTok or a Reel um, and has that natural, almost unedited feel to it. And we see that that tends to get stronger traction on Reels. Whereas if you're looking at newsfeed, Facebook Watch um, and Instagram stories and feed, then you would maybe look at um, a higher quality ad for that or a video. Thank you. No worries. And thanks for the question. Um, the other big thing, and personally, when I um, work with businesses, this is this is the, the main one is answering questions. I find this is a really, really good way to discover what questions you have about your product um, from your audience. And particularly if you're looking to run marketing, this is probably one of the first things I would look to discover is what kind of questions are you getting from people about your product that they necessarily, they didn't necessarily know um, on the surface um, when interacting with your business. What this does is this gives you an idea of the kind of things people are thinking about when they're deciding if they want to go with your business. And we often take these questions and put them into ads. So for example, if you're selling coats and someone asks, well, is it, re is it waterproof? Then you have a good idea that people are ask wondering if it's waterproof before going to your website. So then what we'll do is we'll put that into the ad. So you'll have a coat and then we'll summarize that it's waterproof. Um, it comes in all sizes, these colors. And we notice that there's a much higher um, conversion rate from clicking an ad to making a purchase on the website because there's less unknowns as they go from platform to purchase. Um, so this, I would say, is one of the most powerful tools that you can have when interacting with people on your page is discovering what questions people have and being able to answer those um, so that they're then able to feel comfortable working with your business and they don't have anything subconsciously that's um, perhaps nagging on them. Another big one is pin comments. Um, it's a great feature to have if you are running live because it allows you to um, pin things that you want to highlight to people. Um, and uh, at the end of everything, you can share that live session as well. Um, I don't see this happen too often, but if you see that you've had a really great session, particularly when you're looking at product launches, um, deals, any, any kind of promotion that you're running there, um, it's wise to share it. Um, because then it allows you to, to capitalize on that momentum a little bit more. Another really big one is to create events. So um, natively within the platform, you can create those events um, and then allow people to sign up, get tickets, um, and generate interest for that. You can also then advertise the event when you have that um, to, um, to gain some more paid traction behind it too. So with that, that also allows you to set up recurring invites, sell tickets to that event uh, and manage invitees as well, all in one place, um, as well as answer and interact with your community about that event um, on the page. Have you got any good ideas, Ben, for um, kind of events that have worked really well or the type of events that work really well? Yeah. Um, so 
what we see quite a lot is um, actually one I, one I'd worked on recently um, was with a clothing brand, and they had an event where they had decided to bring their their influencers that they work with together in one place, give them the same outfits and do a who wore it better um, competition between them, and um, we saw that had huge amounts of interest, um, particularly because we had it the the influencers. Um, share the share the events as well so that would be that was quite large scale um if you were to to look at doing something on a smaller scale the a very common one we have are things like community events um where um particularly if you're a locally based business and um actually i did see an accounting firm do this very well they had um like a coffee and donuts event so they created it they then invited local business owners to come and um essentially talk around their business and uh, get some free advice uh, from the firm over a coffee. Um, and it gave the firm a way to advertise that they were there, showed that they knew their stuff and uh, drive leads off the back of that for, for future uh, engagements with, with these business owners. They were just publicizing it, but it was a live in-person event essentially. That's correct. Yeah. yeah, you can host hybrid events as well, um, but they did it in person. Um, yeah. In it was in Ipswich, so it wasn't a massive town. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, they've done it in person. It seemed to work very well, actually. So, um, and somebody's just asked. Yael's just asked. Does it cost money to create an event? I. It doesn't. No, it's completely free. Um, all you need is a Facebook page, which is free to create too. Um, and then, yeah, the only the only time you would pay is if you wanted to advertise your events, um, but that's optional. They actually didn't. Um, well, they did run some ads, but not very much. They they actually leveraged their their network primarily and asked people to invite their friends um, if they were going. Great. You can host um, paid online events as well. So like I said, with that hybrid aspect, you can host events online and um, sell tickets too. Um, although that is optional, you can do it for free, you can do it live, you can do it in person. Um, the options are there, but it's free to set all of this up. Um, the only time you, you may pay for that is um, when you collect payments on tickets or um, advertising the event to reach a wider audience. And sorry, just again, have you got any example of, of some good online events that have worked, that have worked well? Yes, actually, um, it was with a gaming company. And um, thanks. Thanks for asking the question, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was with a, it was with a gaming um, convention and they just started out. And um, this was just after COVID. And it was a bit like a, a little bit like Comic-Con, that kind of thing, where they were looking to have um games companies indie games com companies come and um showcase their games and and bring people along to 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 drive traction for these these startup games and um it's done in person now and it is a local business but at the time they they weren't able to get a a venue in the town hall to do it um so what they've done was decided to host it online and um get some up and coming professional gaming teams to play and they normally stream it to to twitch so they do this anyway they have the equipment to do it um but then what they've done is is hosted an exclusive event this team versus that and um sold those tickets online which they then used to to pay for setup and um for the teams and ultimately what that did was it worked very well to drive engagement for that event but it gave them a really big list of future attendees for the in-person events um which then was was um the, they collected payments in person for that although they were able to people were able to buy tickets online via uh, the events page on platform um but but tickets could be sold via the website and in person as well for that one great thank you so a few a few examples here um, is teaching a class, um, virtual presentation, um, hosting a performance, and that was I guess where we had si a, a similar scenario with this gaming 
convention that um that they wanted to run was um basically hosting a show um some entertainment that that some people would pay to watch the other really big thing is creating groups and uh, this gives your customers and your audience a place to first of all congregate and um um discuss different things about your business and um about their needs but it also allows you to provide quick updates to people for example let's say you're opening slightly later well if you have a group it's easier to announce to people that you're going to start a bit later um don't worry we are open still and um this is also a very good way to um curate um different groups about your um, your products and and also to see what kind of questions and I, I keep coming back to the question thing because it has been so so valuable for us we've we've been doing a lot with that this year oh sorry for the pop-up um and uh yeah groups are a really good place to go for this as well so yeah um in order to to get people to join the first port of call for this would be to invite people to to join and you can do this um via a bulk invitation um and then people have the chance to join that group um you can also um create a post that includes that joining link there too if you wanted to go further with it you could then take that post and turn that into a, an ad so you could boost it and um what would happen is it would look the same except where that one hour mark is it would say sponsored um, but other than that it would be the same post um, the other thing worth mentioning as well is you can create um admins for your page so um what you'll find is if your group gets quite large um you may want to to delegate that responsibility to someone to to manage that page um and it's quite easy to do you can create an admin they will then be able to go in and and reply to to customers answer any questions um as well as make sure that what's what's being posted on there is is relevant for your business and someone hasn't gone to the wrong page for example the other important thing is to set guidelines and i think this is 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 really key um because particularly when you're talking about a business and people um join to follow your business it needs to feel like a safe space and they need to be able to answer questions without worrying about people not being respectful um or trying to spam or advertise to them um and any of those things that you just don't really want when you need an open forum for people to discuss and the important part of that is to showcase your services so you can actually add your services to your page and when you have a group when you have an audience then it's very easy for them to access your services and see what you have available um, so you click on this services tab you then add a service you're able to add the name of the service if you have a fixed price you can add that the duration um, and any description there as well you can then manage them so you can customize your menu you can also customize the availability that these services are um available for for users um and you can also use that to sync calendars as well so so when people use a service or access a service you can sync that with your calendar and then you have um, everything in one place and you can work out when people are likely to come and interact with you um and when you have time free you can also set reminders for those so that you don't forget um, and then in terms of where we integrate, we, we integrate with a lot of platforms via our API to um, manage those appointments and uh, manage your calendar. Um, but to give you an example, these are some we've got here. Um, however, if you visit our website um, or just search um, for services, APIs or services integrations, Facebook, um, you'll get an updated list of what we've got there um, because it is quite a lot. Okay, so I've I've tried to whiz through building a presence, building those Can pages. I, sorry, Ben, before you it. carry on, 
Um, I have had a question, which might just before you go on to this, where sure. obviously WhatsApp business is already set up. So, you know, and one person asked, um, can you connect WhatsApp business, Facebook and Instagram? Um, that was one question. And then somebody else also asked, how do you use WhatsApp most kind of help? Can you give an example mm -hmm. of how you set up WhatsApp most helpfully? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, what we've done this year and, and what you'll see next year um, is WhatsApp is, is going to be built out um, a lot more um, um, for businesses. And the reason for this is, is first of all, um, we see a lot of people are, are like to click to WhatsApp and talk with a business via WhatsApp. And um, that comes under what we call business messaging. So if you were to search business messaging, Facebook, that's where you'll find out about um, WhatsApp and what we're able to offer there. Um, and we do the same with Messenger too. Um, but people like to to talk with a business um, on a one-to-one -one basis and, and have that personalized interaction with them. So um, what we see very common is click to WhatsApp. So whether that be an ad or a link on your page or Instagram, um, people will click and it will take you to your WhatsApp business page um, where they'll then message you the options you have there are first of all it's a secure messaging service so we find that people prefer that um, it's also a messaging service that people regularly use anyway and therefore it's more comfortable for them to use than go to something they've never used before um, and we're also building out um, more functionality to prevent fraud and verify that your business is your business and this will be with verified um, business pages on whatsapp which means that not only will you be searchable um on whatsapp but also when they click and they interact with you it will have that verified uh check mark to say that you've proven to to us that you are that business and this this whatsapp belongs to you and it just adds that layer of security for um users the one thing we can't do and we don't plan to do is put ads on whatsapp because it is um a bit of a black box for us in terms of it's it's encrypted so we, we really don't know what people say or do on there um so therefore we we've decided not to to run ads on that but what you will be able to do is is build out your business presence on there to to tie in with your facebook and instagram and i absolutely recommend you do it because um we've seen it work very very well even for extremely large um uh businesses so for example um just from from my experience i've um a, a very large internet provider uh, over in ireland uses it for their customer service so actually when it's time to pay my bill i get a whatsapp from them and uh and then a lot of credit card companies have started using whatsapp as well and what they found is um instead of using email they have a much higher open rates people tend not to open these emails whereas they will open the whatsapps and um off the back of that they will then also are more likely to pay their bills so um it's a very powerful tool and i definitely would look to in incorporate that into your business and going into next year yeah you'll see um quite a new quite a lot of new features popping up there because um we sort of discovered that it it is a very crucial part of of working with businesses the final piece i'll add um is if you do get an awful lot of messages on WhatsApp and it's too many for you to handle, it is possible for you to create um, some automation there. So what you can do is, is ask five up to five questions um, to a prospective customer and it will be, are you interested in this or that service? They will then click a button and then it will ask them the next question. What that will allow you to do is filter users and customers through so that you can um, provide them the right service immediately rather than having to try and figure it out yourself and um somebody also said gary just asked can you have more than one whatsapp business page you can yep you can have more than one um but typically what i would recommend with that is if you have more than one page you may need more than one facebook or instagram page um which is possible um but typically we, we recommend that if you've got 
either a different service that doesn't really fit in with the original page um, or um, you're looking at two different territories that you want to to work with um, but yes you can thank you cool any more questions any more questions on whatsapp everybody I mean, you can still put them in the chat. Why don't you carry on, Ben? And then no, um, is there no more problem. Well? I'll, yeah. I'll carry on. But thank you for the questions, everyone. Um, got, I have got some other questions at the end, but let, I'll, sure. I'll put those in at the end. Great. OK, so, um, yeah, I've talked around setting up your pages, um, adding your services, creating groups, creating events. There's an awful lot there. And um, we've built a business suite that allows you to bring it into one place um, because before you had all these different platforms to actually do it in. Um, when I learned how to use Facebook, it was four years ago and it was a very different tool to what it is now. And it was, I have to say it was quite confusing. Um, so we've simplified it a bit and brought everything into one place um, with a one-stop shop, which is um, a business suite. I think the important thing, and this is what I tend to use it for is actually scheduling and publishing posts i'm really terrible at posting things um on a regular basis simply because i either don't have time or i'm not in the right frame of mind to be creating content um so i i like to do it in in one and then schedule that for the week or or for two weeks unless there's something that i want to update about my business then in which case i will i will maybe post a live update on that the other really good thing is you have all of your messaging services in one place and also your comments too. Um, the reason I like this is, first of all, you don't have to go across platforms to see who's messaged you. Um, and second of all, it allows you to look at the comments you're getting across your apps and potentially if you need to moderate that content too. If someone is um, has posted something inappropriate or that doesn't follow your guidelines, then it's very easy to find and remove that from here and set up rules um, and content filters on the platform too. And then finally, this is really important, is uh, viewing insights to see details about your business. And this is um, a holistic view of how your page is doing from an organic perspective. So how many people is, are interacting with it? How many people is it reaching without you paying to do anything? And then you have the paid aspect as well. So I've paid for ads, I've paid for interactions. How is that doing alongside my organic? And how is my business growing on those both, on both sides of that, that coin? So yeah, you can download the app. It's all, you can also find it within our, our ads um, or uh, ads manager or business manager. Um, and you can search it and it will be um, online as well. So here's how the inbox looks. And um, the big thing here is um, setting messages that either welcome people to the business. Again, you can have automated replies or saved replies. Um, and we do work with some partners that build tools to create automated messaging, but it's, it's very, um, it feels very human. Um, we don't recommend you have the entire interaction with a robot. But what we do recommend is we use that to help you um, answer questions for, for people quickly. And if they do need more help from a person, i.e. you or um, one of your team, then that's when you can filter them through. Um, but that allows you to, to just add um, an extra layer to it that doesn't always require a human interaction if, if it doesn't necessarily need it. And so here's some insights. This is on the app. Um, and what you'll see is um, when you go on, on the, the web browser to have a look at it, um, this is kind of expanded and you'll, you'll see it all in one place. So the key takeaways there I would recommend is, first of all, set up a page. It costs nothing to do. And even if you do nothing with it, people are able to find you. And um, particularly as you go out and you talk to prospective customers, then they can search you and you'll appear. And uh, it adds that layer of uh, presence and professional uh, uh, personability to, to your business that, that you're there and you're able to be reached on 
on a social platform as well as as, as on Google and on your website. Um, events, groups, services, and uh, Facebook and Instagram Live are free. And um, they are a really good way to build that community and engage with people and actually invite them to engage with you. And I think that's where you'll see the most value is when they start engaging with you because you start learning about your, your audience. And then finally, everything's in a one-stop shop. It's the business suite. You can download the app, you can search it. Um, or if you use ads manager or business manager, you can find it there too. Okay, right. Um, We've got questions. So, yeah, <laughs> let's sorry, take Karen. some questions. Um, so um, we've had a couple of questions about, um, well, first of all, just while we're on the Meta Business Suite, somebody said, um, Gary asked, why would you use Meta Business Suite rather than another scheduling platform like um, Zoho Social or Later or Hootsuite or whatever? I mean, if you use that, you can use that too um that's not a problem um but if you don't have that then we have it natively built into our business suite great lovely um and we've had a couple of questions from um Hava saying what's the difference between business and creator on instagram and what's the mo what's more effective good question so um perhaps if i tell you sort of why we have creator in the first place so she's an artist so um yes yeah so that's 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 this, that might be more relevant for you actually um when we look at instagram we had businesses which were very clearly defined we then had users or or personal profiles what we did find was that influencers and creators who had a large following needed the controls that a business had um, but were using their personal profiles and um, these are controls such as content moderation allowing you to share um, access to to your profile to someone that that may help you manage that um, and a whole host of other things along with that and so what a creative profile is is essentially a, a, a personal profile but with um, some of those controls that a business profile has to allow you to manage that page um and so i would recommend if you are using your personal profile and you want to still make it look like a personal profile um then i would check out creator if you're looking to build a a business presence then that's when i go for a business profile and then she also said there's creator weeks on instagram how can one get featured for creator week um yeah. Very good question, actually. And um, I guess the main thing is um, to, first of all, um, comment and interact with those posts. So we have a team uh, that manages that um, internally um, called Creative Shop, and they monitor these, these very frequently. So I think the first place to go would be to, first of all, be interacting with these posts and also using the hashtags that we have for Creator Week, i.e. hashtag Creator Week. The reason I say that is because Creative Shop check this regularly um, to see what kind of community content is being produced um, to then look at, at doing things as a follow up. So that would be the first place I'd look to do is to to get involved, um, is to 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 interact with with what's happening in Creator Week now. The second thing would maybe be to look at um, when we have projects available and you can check on our our instagram uh page on google so if you search facebook business then we have a lot of uh, resources there around creator week and um how you can get involved with with different events that we run to thank you um and we've also had a question about um a, a good question from gitty saying um have you seen a big difference in the same business when people post regularly or only kind of now and again and then I guess a additional bit to that is do people get fed up of seeing too many posts and pictures too often um the answer to that is yes to both of those so um uh we do see higher interaction um 
and uh, what we call brand recall with uh, businesses that that post regularly. Um, the reason for this is is it keeps you top of mind. Um, there's a lot of businesses on our platforms and um, it's almost a bit like a stage and um, you have a limited amount of time to get someone's attention and remember you and posts are a really good free way to do that. Um, to your second question, yes, you can post too much as well. And um, we see this really uh, most pronounced when it comes to adverts. Um, and the reason we say that is because um, ads, we, we tend to, you can show the same ad over and over and, and very quickly see how sick people are getting of that. And I'm sure everyone on this call has had ads where they're like, I've seen this so many times, I'm sick of seeing it. And we do have the same with posting too much too. I recommend posting two to four times a week. I personally would do two because that's just the time I have available. Um, but then if you're, I have seen some post six to eight times, and then we do see that begins to fatigue and people see that a bit too much then. And I guess the other um, thing that hasn't come up as a question here, but has come up in many of my meetings, is that I often find that clients find social media kind of and posting completely overwhelming. Um, any tips to help overcome that challenge? Absolutely. Yeah. And actually, um, and it sounds weird saying that because I work at Meta, but I really don't like posting. Um, <laughs> I, I like watching and seeing, but I don't like posting very much. And um, one thing that I try to do to help ease that barrier is not to reinvent the wheel. So I look at what other businesses do that I really like and I think is a good idea. And um, I try to incorporate that into um, what I post or think about. So for example, if I see a, a business post about their product and they've said, okay, yeah, we, we have these, these features, I think, okay, maybe I'll post something about my product and some of the features that I have in mind. Yeah. Um, so definitely don't, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, there are a lot of businesses that, that produce some really great stuff and you can use that for inspiration. Um, the other thing I would look to do is go on to um, our business website and we have lots of case studies there and um, insights as well into what kind of things are working on platforms. So that's a really great place to go as well, just to see um, what seems to be working currently. Um, and we have case studies around businesses that have posted things and they've done really well. So um, that would be the second place. The third thing I would potentially do, um, if you really don't want to, is um, there are um, agencies and freelancers that are very, very good at, at organic growth and um, they can help you with that too. But there is a cost element to that, which um, you may or may not want to explore. Thank you. Um... Oh, and Gary just said, what is the website you just mentioned, re-examples? Could you put that in the chat? Um, could you put that in the chat? I, I will. Yeah, let me just double check what it is. I can't remember what the, the link <laughs> well, is. If you want to send it to me and I can add it into the email that will be sent out at the end of the session, if that's easier for you. Good idea. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's business.facebook.com. Um and the other um, thing I recommend you do is take a look at Blueprint. That's our free online learning tool. Uh, and when we join the company, all of our graduates and new starters um, learn on this tool. And it has everything from very um, uh, simple stuff, uh, like setting up a page and how to build that presence. And it will walk you through that. And it's really good. All the way up to the very advanced things like marketing science and how do you measure how well people remember your brand and driving conversion. So there, there is everything on there. Um, and it is, is, it is a good place to start if you've got some time to, to learn a bit more. Great. Thank you. And then um, Yael's asked, to use Meta Business Suite, do you have to have a Facebook page or does it work on a personal account as well? You need a business page. Okay. Hopefully that has answered your question, yeah. <laughs> um, any, and then I've got another question actually that's come through is um, any, ren, any um, recommendations on how often to post value, i.e. 
kind of, um, you know, tips or techniques versus kind of more sales orientated posts? That's one question. And another question is, um, is it good to keep things relevant? Like obviously the World Cup's going on at the moment, mm -hmm. you know, is it, is it good to kind of link to things that are going on? Um, yeah. With it, like, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so the first question, um, it, it depends. Um, we find different businesses um, benefit from different amounts of value versus sales. So for example, if you're looking at fast fashion, you can get away with posting exclusively sales stuff. If you're looking at a services-based business, we actually find you're better off posting more value-based things, improving your expertise, um, rather than just trying to sell your service. So um, it, it is a spectrum and I would recommend you test it. Try, um, if you have four posts, try two of each and see which get the most interaction. Um, and you'll, you'll quickly find out, I think, from that what seems to resonate best and gets the most views and, and um, what people are, are asking questions on or, or messaging you about. Lovely. And what about the kind of relevance to big? Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I, would, I would absolutely recommend looking at what events are going on currently. Um, it can be a double edged sword. So. When we have events, what we find is, first of all, the amount of users on platform or, or time goes up, but also the amount of businesses and content goes up too. So staying relevant is really, really important. And I think acknowledging what is, is happening um, is a great way to show that, first of all, you're human and, um, uh, and you can relate to to people with those events. But what I would also just caution is, particularly if you're looking to, to run ads um, around the World Cup and things like Black Friday, it's a bit more expensive because there's a lot of advertisers looking to do the same thing. Um, so it's a tool, but also be cautious because there's an awful lot of activity that goes on and, uh, and you may find yourself not getting the traction you'd hoped, um, but I would test it that's normally I can't tell you if it's going to work or not until you try it great lovely thank you and we've had a question Simon I'll come to yours um but um Gillian's asked is the seven second post stroke reel the best way to advertise as apparently this gets picked up Morning in progress. um reels are um very very powerful for organic growth um what we have seen is is it's probably our fastest growing part of any of our platforms now um and it's it's i think the most consumed format on instagram um with that we have a different organic algorithm um on the back of it uh because it's it's simple you scroll through and uh, and you watch a video and so that allowed us to create a very simple but very powerful um, recommendation algorithm off the back of that i would recommend playing with reels and the reason why is because you don't need as much effort to produce a reel um, i'm not very creative if i'm honest um, and i was able to put a reel together within about 30 minutes um, and then within about an hour i was able to make fancy stuff like filters and all of these things but it, it's not hard and um, it just requires you to to play around with it for a bit and, and have a little bit of patience and uh, eventually you'll put one together. But what we've found from Reels is the organic reach on that um, can be huge. And uh, one example I'd seen with, with the business I work with is um, typically they look at, um, sorry for that, everyone. Um, typically they look at um, 20,000 views or, or reach when it comes to their organic um, media uh, on, on, the, on most of their other channels. We created a Reels video um, based on, on that. And it was, it was actually just their, the inside of their company and their company culture. And we had 250,000 views on Reels for that um, within a day. So um, Reels is very powerful. It also is, has a lower barrier to entry. Lovely, thank you. And final question, 
um because we're going to move on to our next session um is somebody said um simon our uh, simon rostein asked um biggest issue he's in pr um and he says biggest issue he has is he work is um clients i work for work for have with facebook is being able to speak to someone when there is an issue is there a best way to speak to a real person who can resolve problems yes um i would recommend click to messenger or click click to to whatsapp um and this is actually almost coming anecdotally although I would recommend it from a work perspective as well, but I had an issue um, at Dublin airports and they have customer service on WhatsApp and uh, it was so much easier to get a response. I didn't have to chase and try and find a link and go on their website and find a chat box. Um, so I absolutely recommend if, if you're looking to, to build up that customer service piece, WhatsApp or Messenger is a really great way to do that. Um, and it makes it feel a lot more human as well because it's on a platform they're comfortable with. Great, thank you. And then uh, Michael said, do you think that the Meta um, suite of options is best? Um, sorry, do you think this suite of options is best for selling things or does Meta also work for professional services like lawyers, recruiters or accountants? Not sure. Absolutely, we work with, uh, with everyone. Um, um, from from all verticals and uh, it, it it's useful for everyone I would say going back to the previous question I would look to post more value-based things than selling if you're in services um, and a really good example of that there was a Dublin lawyer called Richard Grogan and um, he recently passed away sadly but what he would do is post free advice and um, it would only be a one minute long video but it would be um, based on employment law and it would be something you didn't know about employment law. And it went amazingly and he became viral because of it. And um, so I think leading with value when it comes to services and recruiting, those kind of things, um, tends to work a lot better than trying to sell immediately um, because people will see that you are able to provide value from that and then are likely to reach out to you. Thanks. And the final question, I think actually what, somebody was asking as if somebody needs help and support about Facebook or about your meta services, is there somebody that can actually, they could actually speak to about the issues that they're having? So if somebody yes. needs support. Yeah. So, so we have, we have our, um, our, our main support function, which um, all businesses can take advantage of um, our support concierge. The other option you have um when you you grow your business out is it it may be that um you gain value from from becoming a partner of ours um at which case you would have uh, either a partner manager or an account manager like me which is an added layer of support but we find that um starting out you um can i just I, th I think what we're all attempting to understand is that when you're new to facebook business and you have some kind of issue with the business page or yeah you basically end up being with something that seems like a robot. The things that they write don't make sense. And you're like, how do I talk to a human? Because you've decided that something I've done is not right or not functional. You've deleted it. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just talking to a robot that's telling me things that don't make sense in English grammatically or in any universe. So we're, we're attempting to work out how we communicate with an actual human. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that. I think... Uh... <laughs> I think, I think that's the problem <laughs> tally tally will 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 um I, I could speak to ben about that at another time obviously we're a bit short of time now i think everyone seems to be attempting well, to i'm not sure that. everyone is but we'll we'll i will we'll try to get to the bottom of it um but i can understand it can be frustrating when you don't no, i feel like i see i answer. feel like that was the original question i can see that other people keep kind of attempting to understand it's that two people but we'll sure. let, let's um, let's park this unless ben's got a quick answer and uh, I'll, I'll give you a very quick one but yeah we we do have a support system and and they they are people um yeah. and i i use it myself when i'm working with clients um but yeah um who, who you the person you get may not necessarily understand your question um so I, I can't speak personally to to those people but it is okay. it is people you get to thanks thanks awesome. ben thank you 
Um, I'm going to stop everybody here because we want to have a quick uh, comfort break before um, we move on to the um, we move on to the uh, next session. Um, so I would just like to say a huge thank you to um, Ben. Thank you very, very, very much indeed for your time. Um, we really appreciate you being here and being part of our Enterprise Expo event. So thank you very, very much from me um, and everybody here. And um, I am now going to... I'm going to restart. Okay. All right. I'll see you in a minute. Bye. Okay. Um, so welcome everybody to our second session of Enterprise Expo. Um, and I am delighted to welcome um, Benjamin Ru 